right. Thank you for having me here. I hope everybody had a great Wednesday night. Um, so yeah, so um, as David introduced, I'm Vasu Venkateshwaran, and I'm I'm actually an applied mathematician who works on a bunch of research projects like at Gore, and I also like administer our Comsol server system. And it's not really going to be a highly technical talk. Uh, it's going to be more about how we have leveraged the system to. Uh, accelerate some of our product development efforts and other like simulation efforts that we have undertaken in the last year and a half or so. Um, so the outline for the talk, I'm just going to give you a background about Gore, what type of problems we solve, uh, what are our needs based on like these problems, and then how we use the console server product, and then what we like about our setup and where we are heading to in the future. Um, Gore is a material science company. It was founded in 1958 by Bill and Vive Gore in the basement of their house. Uh, Bill Gore used to be a chemical engineer at DuPont for many years. And right now we have around 10,000 associates worldwide, mainly in US and Arizona and like in the Delaware, Maryland, Pennsylvania area. And then in Germany and Japan uh, are our other two major like research and manufacturing centers. Um, we have manufacturing mostly in the US, Germany, and Japan. There's a couple in like uh, the UK, and there's sales offices in like many other companies. And we are constantly listed on one of the best companies to work for in a lot of countries. We have, uh, at its heart, it's a material science company. Most people might have heard of Gore-Tex shoes and jackets, so the material that makes Gore-Tex is made by us. We then sell the material to like um, fabric manufacturers and shoe manufacturers who actually make the product because you definitely do not want a bunch of engineers designing your clothes. Um, <laughs> our other big division is the medical products, uh, where we make like artificial heart valves and stents. Um, this is mostly based out of Arizona uh, in the US. And the, our third division is the division that I work for. is called Performance Solutions. This is, specializes in materials that, are, that have like very specific needs, like you know, it should be UV resistant or like chemical resistant. And my division makes everything from guitar strings to the roof on like the center code of Wimbledon and large filters for industrial applications. Um, our materials are very unique because they're biocompatible, which is what makes uh, allows us to make like uh, things that you can put in your body. We can we can functionalize them to have chemical resistance, low flammability, hydrophobicity, and one of our chief like uh, sort of offerings is that our materials will do what we say they will do every time uh, in the field, and so we have a very high. Uh, standard of quality. Um, on the right, you can see like one of the first experiments where Bob Gore pulled like PTFE to make what's called like expanded PTFE, which is at the core of a lot of like our technology. And just below his picture is the range of like forms that we offer these materials in. Um, Modeling and simulation within Gore is a growing community. We, within each division, we have like a few people that do modeling and simulation. And there are three goals for each of these modeling teams. One is to explain technology, so understand like the at a multi-scale level the physics, uh, and then identify like any bottlenecks or any way we can make improvements uh, to this. And more critically, to identify any death blows, because sometimes these could be like very expensive. And since some of our, our medical products are highly regulated, so it's a very critical like uh, sort of need. The second is to accelerate like development of technology through modeling and simulation instead of running a lot of experiments and expensive field trials. And then the other is efficient resourcing. We are we have research that's done in the U.S., Germany, and Japan. So we need like some coordination and optimization of like resources. And our modeling teams are typically have expertise 
in like porous media, optimization. There's a lot of folks in the medical team that work on structural mechanics and acoustics. Uh, one of my colleagues here is our acoustics expert uh, in the audience. We also do, I, I personally work mostly on numerical solutions and like reaction engineering. And then we have some people working on like fluid flow. And we use like uh, Comsol for a lot of like these purposes. Um, and our typical project will be like somebody will come and ask us, hey, I have like this material. I want to make like a product that will meet like this need for this customer. Can you tell me what like uh, what I can do with it? Like what's the best operating point or like how can I make this more efficient or like what like big death flows are? And so my team uh, typically like sort of goes ahead. They build a model for the system. We interact with the customer to figure out what different like operating conditions are. And then we sort of like prepare our simulations and we we typically want to like distribute our simulations to the team that came to us with this project so that they can actually run the simulations and learn something from it. So that's the that's the part that I'm going to be focusing on because this is a big challenge. Like our team has some expertise in using the software, but then the engineers we communicate with don't always necessarily have like that background. So we have to make like dissemination of this information like very easy for them and i think like this might be a problem that a lot of like people in industry might be facing where you're working with an audience that has a very diverse background and you have to communicate this um, so our biggest limitations was we do this for a lot of businesses and right now we used to at least in the past we used to um write like custom code and create executables and things like that like with large amount of effort so that like you know the, the engineers on the team need not install like software and then they'll be just a, able to use it uh, on their own computer just by like a few clicks and the disadvantage is i can build a model i can pass it on to somebody and then i have no control over it it can get passed on to somebody else who might be using it for something that it wasn't intended to be used for and making some very critical decisions that they weren't supposed to be doing. Um, so there's really no monitoring and no control over like redistribution, which, is, which was a big concern for us. And so this is where like we really like the Comsol server like product. So we now have a central server that's actually in right now, we used to have it in our data center, but we just moved it like to AWS. Uh, on the cloud, um, it's, synchroni it's, it's synchronized with our network and then it already interfaces with all our user restrictions um, in, in our system. And within the server, we have different user groups to control like access to which users have which uh, app, access to which apps and the apps themselves can be like easily like split up. Uh, somebody asked like a question uh, yesterday on how you can organize your apps. So we use it, uh, we do it using like our existing like groups uh, within like our Windows Active Directory this thing um, system. And um, the apps are accessible across um, all of our divisions globally. So all engineers can uh, use like uh, the tools that we are developing. So it's a very efficient way to distribute. We have like perfect control over the version. So sometimes if there is a model that we created and somebody wants like something very specific based on that model, we can like create a specific version for them and we have like control um, over that system. And it's, it's, it's very easy to install this and there's actually plenty of support like uh, Comsol provides. One of the biggest questions, I did this talk like at another event, and one of the big questions that I got was, what are the apps that you typically deploy? Um, I like to categorize them into three categories. One is like what I'd like to call calculators. These are probably the most frequently used tools that we have. So models that fall under this category are very simple, 1D or 2D diffusion and heat transfer where people would just like to change 
simple geometries are more mostly like they'd like to manipulate boundary conditions. So usually the geometry might be a simple rectangle or circle or something, but they might have complicated boundary conditions and they'd like to just cha keep cha changing the boundary conditions according to where they're deploying their particular product and then seeing what, what happens. Um, the second category is design manipulation. So where um, the form factor of the product keeps changing based on like our customer need. And so they'd like to change like the geometry of uh, the the design very easily and then change like material properties because of like the choice um, that our customer needs. These also are pretty heavily used. The third is sort of like a slight abuse of the system, but I think it's a very useful way to like distribute computational load is if you have a large parametric study, the console server lets you um, run like four instances of an app at, at the same time so you can split it up and then have it run on the server and freeing up your workstation from like the computational load. So before I used to run these studies on my workstation and I couldn't do like anything else on it. But now I just like put it on the server and then it runs there. I can reconnect to it like anytime later and get the results um, and then do just the post-processing on like my workstation. So what we really like about the system is that it's an excellent platform for deploying like computational tools. It's centrally hosted, so we have like complete control over what uh, people like see, and non-technical like associates within our company don't need to really do any installation. It's uh, they can just open up a browser, connect to it, and then be able to use like some of the tools that we develop. Uh, we can now harmonize processes so everybody across like the globe can be using the same tools in a very consistent way. Um, we can monitor what use is being done so we could essentially get logs, uh, which is one of the new features in the new um, sort of like uh, update that is coming up, where, whereas we had, we had kind of like written our own custom scripts to do like this. So we know that if somebody's using a particular tool for the purpose it was designed for, and you could actually place restrictions even within the tool through, um, through some Java code in the background. The other key thing is we can actually include, if you go to the App Builder Workshop, they'll, I hope they'll show you like how to include HTML documentation along with the tool, so you can actually, uh, your users will know exactly what the tool was designed for, and they can get like information on how to use it, what information they need to get. Sometimes we might have to get some properties experimentally. They'll know how we can include documentation on how to run those experiments. Um, and then you can easily extend it and make it do a lot more things um, using like Java code. Um, the future, we we wanted to move to a system where, like right now our server is installed on an AWS instance that is running 24 seven. It has a fixed sort of like resource usage. We wanna see if we can expand this where, you know, like the server keeps running on one machine, but then um, you are uh, requesting like extra compute like nodes on an as needed basis. For those of you who attended the rescale session this morning, you can actually uh, do this with their API. So I want, I was very interested in talking to Peter about that. Um, the other thing that we are doing is we have about seven or eight people who have like app development like experience. There are uh, some more people who are using Comsol and we want to get them trained on like how to develop apps and then develop like some be best practices and, um, and allow like expand like our capabilities to upload and maintain like these apps. Um, and with that, I'd like to thank our systems administrator, Richard Sun, who actually administers our server. And then Mikhail Sterner from Comsol helped us like get our initial setup, a lot of the authentication uh, going, and then some of my colleagues who um, are the people who develop a lot of the apps that are on the system right now. And with that, I'll be happy to take any questions.